Small Talk with Sophie Bennett and Sean Bell. Good morning. Is it? Well, I'm trying to I'm trying to liven <laughs> things up here. <laughs> Horrible outside as a storm. It's not a good morning at no. all. No, it's a bad morning. It took me like f- it took me like forty minutes to get here because I'd sort of get so far and then I get blown back a kilometre and then have to retrace my steps. That's right. I was doing an anti Mary Poppins uh, <laughs> approach coming here, being dragged along <laughs> the street by <laughs> my umbrella. Um, yeah, it's a terrible well, day. Well, at least it's not snowing here like it is up north. That's true. At least mm. it's it's only rain and wind and cold mm. and mm. miserable. At least that, yeah. Put be a peggio. Yeah, a good day to curl up next to your radio and learn some English. That's right. Sip on a cup of hot tea and, uh, yes, yeah, soak up the phrasal verbs. Yeah, phrasal verbs is the topic today, is the language topic today, which uh, I find, I, I don't know about you, but all my students say that they have a problem with phrasal verbs. Yeah, I think it's one of the most unpopular parts of learning English. And why, why yeah. do you think that is? Um, I think maybe there are so many different um, versions, let's say. I mean, for mm. example, put. If you say put on, it means one thing. If you say put up, it has a different meaning. Put up with has another different meaning. Put off has another different meaning put down Sylvia's looking at me totally confused perplexed yeah she's already confused you she's see? fed up yeah she's fed up già confusa <laughs> no il fatto che un particolo preposizione che può cambiare significato totale allora sì uh, it confuses uh, students a bit well I think the confusing thing is the all the different meanings that you have for like if you think of take off the plane took off sales have taken off take off your jacket uh, the comedian took off the politician you know it depends so much on context it does depend on context and in a way you could see this as as a, as a positive thing that one mm. word has lots of different meanings mm. so you kind of uh, save energy mm. you only have to learn uh, one <laughs> phrasal verb and you can use it for, <laughs> and you can use it for lots of different things yeah seven different times um, yeah so phrasal verbs were Tackling phrasal ber- verb verbs verbs verb, phrasal verb, verbs verb, today, verb, and to sweeten the pill, uh, to keep you listening, we have got tracks of the new David Bowie album that came out last week. The next day is number one in forty countries around the world. Wow! Yeah. I- incredible. Faccio una traduzione velocemente mm-hmm. in caso che nessuno sa di che cosa stiamo parlando affatto. Stiamo parlando di inglese, ovviamente stiamo parlando di phrasal verbs, uh, questi verbi che sono fatti non soltanto di una parola, ma anche due o tre, per esempio take off, uh, o put on, o put off. Mm-hmm. Uh, stiamo ascoltando anche uh, i nuovi singoli, non singoli, i nuovi tracks del mm-hmm. nuovo album di David Bowie. Fun dabby dozy. Okay. So, phrasal verbs, what's the secret? Well, okay, um, the other week, last week, last week in fact, uh, my, I asked my students, I said, uh, we were talking about grammar and we were talking about the problems with grammar. Mm. And I said, what are your problems with grammar? And a lot of students said phrasal verbs. Mm. Now, would you classify phrasal verbs as grammar or vocabulary? Yeah, très intéressant, mm. this question. <laughs> uh, personally, I would... Um, define phrasal verbs as vocabulary. Uh, Maybe students think of it as grammar because there's the complication of where to put the object. Uh, For example, uh, get on the bus, per esempio, questo è uno abbastanza conosciuto, no? Mm. Uh, Salire sull'autobus. Get on the bus. Dove si mette il bus? Si mette alla fine? Si mette in Eh. mezzo? Forse per questo motivo i studenti Mm. vedono come problema grammaticale. Also, you've got the problem of transitive and transitive verbs. There's transitive and transitive uh, phrasal verbs, and I think you're talking about separable and I- inseparable. Inseparable. Inseparable, sorry. Inseparable phrasal verbs. That's right. Your problem with transitivo, intransitivo, se hanno oggetto o no. Um, allora, probabilmente è quello. Allora, io, direi per, io lo vedo più come uh, una questione di vocaboli. And maybe the answer, uh, la risposta, the answer would be to to look at the verb and the object as as a whole, come mm. una cosa intera, come una cosa completa. A chunk. A chunk, see, sì, that's that's the yeah. lexical approach. Un approccio vedendolo come un, um, una ciocca di linguaggio, mm. un blocco di linguaggio, mm. invece di metterlo in fragmenti. Do you think that's why students find it difficult that they're approaching phrasal verbs like grammar, so they're thinking of verb, uh, pronoun, preposition, 
and they're, they're sort of breaking it down and analysing it too much. Do you think that's what makes it difficult for them? It could be, it could be. Uh, potrebbe essere questo, che okay? i studenti lo guardano come problema grammaticale, come tutti i verbi poi alla fine. Uno potrebbe anche guardare tutti i verbi, i tempi eh, sotto le grammaticale come, come mm. ciò che di, di linguaggio. Mm. Present perfect, you know, mm. how long have you been here? Mm-hmm. Uno può impararlo così, senza mm. andare troppo... Come si insegna anche ai bambini, mm. alla fine, non, non vai a anali- fare le analisi grammaticali. Allora mm. lo prendi come uh, in intero. This could be um, a way of simplifying it mm. for students. Mm. Uh, shall we give an example? Yes. Let's, let's give an example. For example, switch it on, switch on, uh, mm. accendere, mm-hmm. switch on the light. Could mm-hmm. you switch it on? Mm-hmm. Lo, lo, lo impari così. Yeah. Uh, switch on the light, switch the light on. And then if you're learning that, learn the opposite as well. Switch on, switch off. Learn what the collocation is going to be. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. Should we have a song just to break up? And yeah, let's break it up. Yeah, that's good. Break it up a little bit. Break up, interrompere. And put on a song. There we go, phrasal verbs. Phrasal verbs, you can't get through the day without at least saying 500 of them. Get through the day. Exactly. That was another one. Yeah. yeah. See? You can, uh, you know, for students go, do you have to learn phrasal verbs? Yes, you do. That's a, we, we, we use them all the time. Phrasal verbs. Yeah. Coming and to a town near you. Coming to a town near you. Anyway, the next day was released uh, last Tuesday in Italy, um, uh, Monday in some other territories, and went straight to number one on iTunes. Um, people seem to be forgetting that um, this is the first number one that David Bowie has had for about 20 years. Wow. Um, his last number one in the UK was back in 1993, Black Tie, White Noise. So um, it's quite it's quite an event, and I, I think it's because it's such a good album. Yeah, it's a reason to celebrate. Yeah. Uh, anyway, here is the second single of the album. The the first single was, of course, Where Where Are We Now, which we um, we did a whole show on <laughs> back in January. Uh, this one is Stars Are Out Tonight. David Bowie.
David Bowie, the new single, The Stars Are Out Tonight. Fantastic video um, with uh, featuring David Bowie and Tilda Swinton. Have you seen it? I've seen three quarters of it, yeah, and mm. uh, she's my favourite actress. Yeah. So it's v- v- very exciting to watch it. Yeah. Well, it's great because I think both of them are sort of artists who who have played around with this idea of androgyny and identity, mm. and I, I I think you know the video is just you know on a on another level to other other stuff that you see sort of now. Absolutely. I yeah. mean, it, it's, it's very, very inspiring. It's great to see somebody mm. doing something different and something original. It's wonderful. It gives you, it gives you hope for creativity. Well, I think that's the thing about Bowie, and I think that that's why um, there's kind of been this surge of popularity now, is I think people realise sort of how influential he's been on popular music. And his music and his videos and, and just... Uh, it, He's a cultural, I think, influence. There's so many ideas that he, um, you know, he's sort of putting out there. Yeah, it's a, yeah, a boost for everybody. Um, allora, per fare ricordare, stiamo parlando di phrasal verbs. Um, abbiamo deciso che è meglio guardarli non come una, un uh, discorso grammaticale, ma invece è co- un discorso di vocaboli, di impararli uh, in ciocche, in chunks, in blocchi di linguaggio, invece di provare mm. di frammentarlo. Um, questo è sta, eh, il nostro primo consiglio. Poi per imparare come tutti i nuovi vocaboli, l'importante mm. è scriverli, mm. di vedere nel contesto. Mm. Allora, leggere è importantissimo per ricordare i vocaboli. Mm-hmm. Più, eh, più leggete, più è possibile di aumentare i vocaboli. Mm. Eh, la frequenza in cui lo, lo, le sentite, lo ve- mm. le vedete, lo utilizzate. Mm. Allora, sempre la pratica di più che fate, meglio è perché poi. Le, le incontri più di, più di una volta, allora questo è un modo per, per magazzinarli. Um, che altri consigli possiamo dare per vocaboli? Help! 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 Um, I, I think that, yeah, learn in context. Learn in, in, in the situation that you're going to use them. Make connections with other words. We Our brain processes language by the connections that it makes with with other words. So work on your chunks, work on your collocations, work on your context. That's, you know, don't sort of break it down and translate it. Sì, e anche un altro consiglio di non sempre utilizzare elenchi, perché dicono che elenchi anche non è molto utile per farli ricordare. Ma visivamente è meglio mettere nelle mappe. Anche io ho visto quando ero in Giappone, in modo per imparare i vocaboli, avevano piccole cartine su un anello tipo per le chiavi. Mettevano tutte queste piccole cartine lì con i vocaboli scritti, così lo portavi in giro. Okay. Così tr- sul treno, quando aspettavi il dentista facendo la fila, la posta, ci sono tantissime possibilità. Tutti questi fili che dobbiamo fare ogni giorno, yeah. tiri fuori t- queste mazzette di vocaboli e, e yeah. via. Impari, non so, 20 nuove phrasal verbs mentre stai pagando una bolletta. Well, you could because you'd be there for months. Anyway, well, in Italy you would. Um, <laughs> Un right. molto <laughs> sarcastico di Mr. Bell. We are going into commercial now and we will be back after the commercial with more from David Bowie's new album and more phrasal verbs. Radio Stella Città And here we are talking about phrasal, phrasal verbs. verbs. <laughs> <laughs> Slowly coming in there. Now, why should you learn phrasal verbs? This is a, this is the question I get all all the time. It's so hard to learn. Why should I learn them? Perché devo imparare phrasal verbs? Mm. Uh, because we use them. Perché sono molto frequente. Lo mm. senti, lo senti sempre nel, nel conversation. Sono più comune. De, il verbo formale, de, quello che vengono dal latino, dà un effetto un po' di essere un po' pompous. Uh, pomposo, yeah. Si dice pomposo. Well, I I give the example. Um, I do a lesson with my students where um, I give them a piece of text which has been translated word for word from Italian. Yes. Without uh, without looking at, at uh, collocation, without looking at context. Yeah. Basically, like a, a Google Translate where you've just gone word word in English, uh, word in Italian translated into English. Yes. And. Um, The thing is, you get very, very strange antique sort of 
phrases like he descended from the train. Exactly. Uh, he extracted the clothes from his suitcase. It's very unnatural. Yeah. Whereas you, you know, you get on and off a train. Exactly. You know, you take out clothes. You exactly. you put in clothes and yeah. uh, you, you put the clothes in your suitcase. Take the clothes out of your suitcase. Yeah. Um, so, uh, but also, I think that the great thing about phrasal verbs is they're really visual. They give you, they can give you a really clear visual metaphor for. Um, certain actions which would otherwise take a long time to explain. For example, mm. the plane took off. Mm. How else would you say that in English? Okay, uh, took off sarebbe l'aereo è decollato. Took off, uh, it um, left the ground. Non si dice, non c'è, in questo caso non c'è proprio un altro modo per dirlo, credo. Oh, it, it's suspended into the air. No, fai mm. un giro di parole molto strano. Because But, uh, take off has that whole idea of the plane getting very, very, very fast and then it leaves the ground and then it becomes airborne. Yes. So, yeah, the plane took off. This is uh, one mm. example of a phrasal verb. Uh, nel, and ci sono tanti nell'ambito di, di viaggio, di travel, perché mm. prima dicevi, OK, get off the bus, scendere da, dal pullman, dal treno, get on, mm. get on, get off, salire e scendere. Mm. Sono molto comune e questo è anche un buon esempio per dire e più lo sentiamo, più, le, più lo impariamo, perché mm. ormai get on e get off sono mm. conosciuti da, mm. da tutti i studenti perché lo senti sempre. However, learn the context, learn the collocation, you get on, a train, get on a bus, get on a plane, but you get in a car, get in a taxi. Exactly, exactly. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, you set off also on a journey, quando yeah. parti per, yeah. per iniziare un, un viaggio, you mm -hmm. set off. Yeah. Poi nella macchina ci sono tanti phrasal verbs, anzi non puoi uh, andare nella macchina quasi uh, senza un phrasal verb. No. Quando fai bagagli devi metti <laughs> sempre <laughs> una valigia piena di phrasal verbs. Yeah. Per, perché? Per speed up. Uh, per prendere velocità slow down slow down mm. rallentare mm. blow up the tires che sarebbe gonfiare mm. le gomme blow yeah. up the tire fill up the tank fill up the tank fill up with petrol yeah quando deve riempire con benzina mm. fill her up fill her up jerk yeah uh, pull up quando deve accostare mm -hmm. uh, pull over la stessa mm -hmm. cosa che deve accostare mm. if you run over somebody speriamo di no quando yeah, run over preso, so preso di sotto preso di sotto qualcosa così non yeah. mi sta guardando la mia uh, Simultanea interprete, <laughs> vediamo, lo lasciamo così, <laughs> to run over eh, quando purtroppo forse un animale viene investito. investito, ok, investito, run over and poi speriamo di no, è capitato a me, anche mm. break down, mm. quando la macchina si, ferme, mm. si ferma, uh, break down, so tutti yeah. phrasal verbs, speed up, slow down, blow up, fill up, pull mm. up, pull over, run over and break down. Good way of learning, of course, is with songs. Yes, of I course. I think, it, you know, pull up there, you know, classic pull up to the bumper, Grace Jones. That's right. And mm. uh, get up, get on up with uh, James Brown. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that, you know, this is a great way to learn. Uh, songs are full of phrasal verbs. So, uh, you know, that that is one way to learn them. Yes. It's like any vocabulary. Really. Yeah. It's the same, isn't it? Well, I, I think that's the key is learn it like vocabulary. Don't yeah. think of it as grammar. Yeah. Learn it uh, like a, a chunk of vocabulary. Learn it like, you know, a phrase from a phrase book. Yeah, so yeah. impararlo come vocabolo, non la grammatica, è come io uso la parola ciocca, non so, come chunk, come si dice la nostra in-house interpreter, un uh, ciocco di linguaggio, un blocco, blocco, blocco. ok, yeah. la stessa cosa, un blocco, yeah. un blocco di linguaggio, ok. Okay, should we have another song? Oh, let's have another song. Okay, we are running through The Next Day by David Bowie. It was released last week. Uh, this is a Valentine's Day. Is it? Well, not today. <laughs>
David Bowie and Valentine's Day. Of course, it isn't Valentine's Day today. Yes, a good job you mentioned that, actually. You could have confused some people out there because there is confusion about Mother's Day as well because it was Mother's Day in England about a week ago, Yeah, I discovered afterwards. In New Zealand, Mother's Day is the first week in May. Well, there you go. And it was last week in England. And when's Mother's Day in Italy? Does anybody know? When's Mother's Day in Italy? Hello? Maggio. Yeah, I think ah, it's the same as in New Zealand. Same as New Zealand. Yeah. So you have to be careful. First weekend, first Sunday in, in May. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so you have to be careful. You're living in a different country to your to your native country. You have to yeah. keep checking up on these dates. Father's Day is completely different. Yeah. Uh, in, in New Zealand, Father's Day is the first Sunday in September. Oh, really? Yeah. And I'm not sure when Father's Day is in England, to tell you the truth. Mm. Um, no idea when it is in Italy. So. Uh, well, it's uh, San Giuseppe in, in Italy. Okay. But um, us... Us uh, heathen countries, we we, <laughs> we don't change it around. Yeah, yeah. So anyway, <laughs> that, that was change it val- around. There's a phrasal That's verb. That's a phrasal verb. Yeah. There you yeah, go. Exactly. Just, like, Try and get through the day without saying a phrasal verb. You can't. Okay, there's a challenge for you. Anyway, back to where we were. That was. You sound like a Latin dictionary if you went through the. Went through the day well without d- using phrasal verbs. I do have a friend who tends mm. to, to use a lot of Latin-based, Italian-based uh, vocabulary. Yeah. And he sounds awfully pompous. Yeah. Um, and I do t- try, try to say him, I think it's just not appropriate. Non è naturale di non utilizzare phrasal verbs. Lui mi rifiuta perché vuole parlare bene, tra virgolette. Vuole parlare un certo livello di linguaggio perché in italiano è anche una persona molto eloquente, ma... Et, eh, non riesco a convincerlo di, di capire che ha un effetto anche contrario. I, I, this, this is a mistake that a lot of students make. Um, it, they sort of see phrasal verbs as informal language, and to a large extent that's true. Mm. But there are certain phrasal verbs which you just use all the time in writing and speaking, and because they're the most effective verb to use. We were talking yeah. just before about how they convey complex idea very quickly. Yes. Um, that's why you use them. Good style in English is to get your point aqua- across quickly and effectively. And uh, I, I think that's what... Um, uh, you know, very good students, uh, you know, good Italian students with a high level of English, they do struggle with this idea of the s- good style is different in in each language. Yeah. So, mm. phrasal mm. verbs, si per fare un riassunto, phrasal verbs non sono colloquiali, non, non si parla male quando usi phrasal verbs. Mm. Uh, sono ben integrati nel linguaggio informale, conversazionale, anche formale. Mm. So, like you say, to get your idea across... There's another phrasal verb. Yeah. Comunicare tu idea, get your idea across. Now, I would use that all the time, to get your idea across. You use that in a presentation, you use that, you know, in a formal lecture. Yeah, because it gets your idea across, doesn't it? It gets it across quickly. That's right. Have we got time to do another sort of category of phrasal verbs? Or Why not? I think we've got 30 seconds. Oh, 30. That's not very often. <laughs> that's not very long, is it? Okay. Uh, very, very quickly, if you're using the telephone, you will hear some phrasal verbs. So, hold on. Sede be aspettare. I'm putting you through. Yeah. Ti sto colligando. No. Non collegando, ti sto collegando, si dice, put you through, ti collega. No, quando deve mettere una persona, quando c'è centralinea, deve parlare con uh, qualcuno. In collegamento. In colle- mm. sure. Is it? Yeah, in collegamento, quando deve, ok, put you through. I'll just put them through. Put them through. Uh, <laughs> put you through. <laughs> quando deve collare con pe- una persona, che okay. posso parlare con il manager? I'm just putting you through. Trasferisco la chiamata. Ah, that's it, uh, that's uh, it. Yeah. yeah. Trasferire la chiamata, put you through. Or more likely you just sit there listening to Muzak for 30 minutes. That's true, yeah. And then you <laughs> just get bored and you, <laughs> and you hang up. And they go, this yeah. call oh, costs 80 cents, that's 80 it. euro cents a minute. When you call the call centre, <laughs> non ce la fai più, you hang up the telephone. Cause hang up, a, yeah. A, a you hang up because you're fed up. That's right, call centres, boo. <laughs> You're fed now, up. I worked in a call center once. I'm sure it's I'm sure it's very difficult work. It is really hard. They uh, call centers are like the modern slave ships. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I can Think believe that. Think of those that. poor people in that call center. Yeah, yeah, I feel very sorry for dealing with irate people all day every day. And then you've got some manager hanging over you going, "Why haven't you answered, you know, 20 million calls this hour? You've missed three calls." Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no poor things. Mm. Okay, so So, th- anyway, that? After that little political statement, 
Is it time for some news? <laughs> time for the news. And then uh, when we come back, uh, we're going to have more tracks from David Bowie's The Next Day. And Sophie will be, I have to run run off. There's another phrasal verb. You're going to go and get on the train. I'm going to get on the train and go to work. Um, may, yeah, maybe talk about the difference. You know, particles, prepositions, that kind of thing. I might do. Might I might do, do that. Might There's might. an idea. There's yeah. an idea. Okay, but before I sign off, um, I just say after the news, we'll be back with more David Bowie from the album the next day, and Sophie will talk you through, talk you through phrasal verbs. Yes. So hang around there. Yeah. Don't turn off your radio. And don't go away. Stay tuned. <laughs> <laughs> Bye. <laughs> Bye. Avete ascoltato Radio Stella, Città News.
And that was I'd Rather Be High by David Bowie from the new album Next Day that's just been released. Uh, classic. It's nice to hear David Bowie's song again. It makes you feel nostalgic for those years gone past. It's, a, I mean, the classic uh, Impronto di David Bowie. The voice, the, the music, beautiful, fantastic. So Sean has uh, gone rushing off to catch the train to get on the train. Today we're talking about phrasal verbs. Stiamo parlando di phrasal verbs, uh, come affrontarli e qualche esempio. Allora, andiamo avanti per vedere una categoria nel, uh, nel mondo dei rapporti, uh, relationships. So, le storie d'amore, eh, l'evoluzione di un rapporto with a phrasal verb. So, first of all, you could pick someone up. I know I'm going to ask Sylvia, my... Uh, my personal translator here to help me out with this. If I'll try. Oh. I'll try. <laughs> okay, to pick someone up. Um, e quando forse vai a un bar, vai a uh, un discoteca, and you incontri qualcuno che ti piace, and you uh, you manage to to have a, a meeting, uh, to to make contact. Come potrebbe essere tradotto? Io lo so, uh, la parola in modo informale, molto infociale, non posso dirlo. Credo. Ma è quando si rimorchia? Yes, that's the one. Perfetto. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so to pick somebody up, so to pick up a girl. Di solito sono i uomini che vanno a pick up. So pick sì. up the girl. C'è anche pick up truck che è conosciuto, no? è, è utilizzato il pick-up, uh, quei truck americani... Ma è una macchina il pick-up. Sì, sì, sì. sì, 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 sì. Pick-up, perché quello è per ramocchiare le merci. Allora, sì, per trasportare, trasportare Trans- le merci. Ok, so qui c'è un po' un um, collegamento per fare ricordare. Pick-up truck, pick-up... Um, Traduzione di nuovo per rim- oh, devo dire alla fine non lo vuoi dire tu ma lo dico io <ride> <ride> quando si rimorchia okay, okay. in discoteca nei locali insomma that's right so go and pick up a girl and if you pick somebody up you can ask her out so ask her out chiederla di, di, di uscire con te to ask her out and then fortunately or hopefully you'll get on with her so to get on with us, andare d'accordo. Sì. So we got on very well. Siamo andati molto d'accordo. So, so far so good. Siamo guardando questa evoluzione del rapporto. So you've picked her up. You've asked her out. You're getting on with her. And so you start going out with her. Uh, uscire insieme. Okay. To go out with somebody. So you could say, I'm going out with Jane. I'm going out with I'm Sarah. Go- okay. Yeah. Vabbè, come in italiano, sto uscendo. Exactly, yeah, to go out with. Okay. Uh, you can take her out. So you can take her out uh, for dinner. You can take her out to the movies. Um, Porta la fuori, did I? Yes, to take, yeah. to take her out. But make sure you get dressed up. Make sure you get dressed up. Che ti veste in modo... Ele- A pennello? No. Ele- elegante. Elegante. Ah, yeah. okay. So get dressed up. Che diverso okay. di dress, because dress sarebbe vestirsi, ma dress up è quando ti vesti in modo elegante. Um, and then, uh, yeah, you could eat out together, andare per mangiare fuori insieme, mangiare cena. E prima di andare a mangiare insieme fuori, un attimino, qualche istante che c'è un promo in diretta, un attimo, eh, rimanete qui su 101.2. Newsroom, programma di informazione e approfondimento, dal lunedì al giovedì, dalle ore 19.15, su Radio Stella Città e sul canale 656 di Provincia TV. Newsroom. 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 L'avevo detto che era rapido. Dicevi? In merito ai paraphrasal verb. Phrasal verbs. <laughs> phrasal. And re- phrasal verbs and relationships. <laughs> so, uh, con, se tutto va bene, comunque riuscite poi alla fine to get on well together and you, and you eat out together. Andare per mangiare fuori, eat out. Ok, poi purtroppo, se, andando a fare ricerche su phrasal verb, trovavo tante, per, quando le cose vanno un, un po' male. Okay. Ecco. So, you could fall out. So to fall out means uh, litigare. So you could fall out with your girlfriend, fall out with your boyfriend, uh, but hopefully you can put up with them. Uh, speriamo che riesci a sopportarli, sì. to put up with them, nonostante tutte le difficoltà. Um, there's also to stand someone up. So le cose vanno male. To stand someone up e dare... Bu- buca? Buca. Dai, il due di picche, bu- la buca. Sì, dare buca, to stand someone up. So he stood me up. 
quando c'è un appuntamento e eh, eh, non ti presenti allora quella è buca proprio that's right dalle buca sì 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 yeah, sì, yeah, sì, yeah. sì sì non consigliato è poco elegante insomma è poco carino è that's meglio so. che mandi un messaggino non mi piaci non vengo giusto invece che lasciare lì la ragazza ad aspettare o un ragazzo ad aspettare that's oh. right so don't stand anybody up so he stood me up she stood me up Ok, e uh, last but not least, uh, se le cose proprio andano in mano male, you break up with somebody. Rompere. So, that's right, we've broken up. Ci ah. siamo. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Lasciati. <laughs> so that's uh, a, a, a life in the, a day in the life of a relationship with a phrasal verb. Tutti i phrasal verb f- per descrivere l'evoluzione di un uh, rapporto da, d'amore, storia d'amore. Pure accendere e spegnere la luce è un phrasal verb. No. That, yeah, that's right. Sì, non è collegato a rapporti eh, d'amore, comunque perfetto. questo è un modo più, sì, più pratico. Yeah, how do you say that, Silvia? Can you remember? Take on, take off. Take on, take off your clothes. Eh. Quello sarebbe, sì, togliere i vestiti, mettere i vestiti. Take on and take put off on, your clothes. Put off. Put on the light. Yeah. Put on the light, put on uh, put off the light. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, also put on the, light. put on the radio or TV, uh, put on put off the, r- the TV or radio, no? That's right. Yeah, generally yeah, we uh, switch on, switch on, switch yeah. on, switch off, switch, yes. on, switch on, switch on the light, switch off the light, switch on the radio, switch off the radio. Turn on. Turn on. Turn on. Che comunque è, è un, uh, un movimento un po' diverso, ma comunque significato uguale. Turn on the light. Turn on the light. Turn off the light. Ma you can utilize a lot of uh, verbs for spegnere la luce. <laughs> sì, io non so, passiamo tutto il tempo a accendere e spegne, <laughs> spegnere le luci. Put on, in put off, turn on, turn off. <laughs> sì, switch on, switch, switch off. Uh, you can utilize a lot of verb. Sì, 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 si può proprio divertirsi ah. uh, spegnendo, accendendo la luce, la radio. Wow. <laughs> cioè, ma guarda una bambina piccola che gli yeah. insegni come si dice spegnere la luce. On, off, on, on off, off, on, off, off, on, off, on, off. Ecco, dopo questo on, off, on, off, <laughs> ci fermiamo ancora qualche istante perché andiamo ad ascoltare rapidamente, ma rimanete qui su 101.2, okay. la away. pubblicità. Radio Stella Città Come on. 
And thank you, David Bowie. That was a bonus track from his new album the next day called I'll Take You There. Fantastic, fantastic. Okay, so back to phrasal verbs. We were talking about phrasal verbs and relationships. Now, uh, a couple of commonly mistaken phrasal verbs. Um, che spesso uh, gli studenti fanno errore quando utilizzano certi verbi in inglese perché fanno la traduzione di italiano. C'è i verbi grow, grow up and bring up. Uh, perché grow um, spesso usano com, uh, in modo uh, sbagliato. To grow è soltanto quando cresci fisicamente. Invece grow up, che è phrasal verb, sarebbe crescere in tutti i sensi, anche emotivamente, mentalmente. Really? So, vero, 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 vero. So, per esempio, I grew up in, uh, in Yorkshire. Uh, mi sono cresciuta, no, sono cresciuta, sono cresciuta in Yorkshire. Sì, I grew up in Yorkshire. E invece i genitori, uh, non, they don't, parents don't grow up their children. Non è possibile per uh, i genitori di grow up i bambini, invece loro bring up. So the parents, my mother brought me up uh, to, uh, to eat lots of fruits and vegetables, for example. No, 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 mi sono persa, non ho capito. Allora, <laughs> grow fisicamente. Sì, quello sì. Ok, anche pianti, fiori, sì. animali crescono. Grow up è intransitivo. Sì. Ok, so I grew up in Yorkshire, sono cresciuta in Yorkshire. Sì. Che debbe, sono diventata adulta, speriamo. <laughs> Quella è l'ultima a morire, la speranza. That's right, emotivamente. Invece you bring up i genitori uh, fanno questo they bring you up che sarebbe credo in italiano ed- educare sì, uh, ti, ed- ti educano ti fanno crescere exactly so they bring you up uh, uh, questo è proprio il compito del de de genitore, genitore. Ah, to ecco. bring you up so you, you potresti anche dire I was brought up in senso passivo perché eri cresciuto dai genitori I was brought up in Japan ok uh, che diverso allora questo è transitivo c'è un po' di confusione, no? okay, ho, ho aumentato la confusione Silvia. Beh, un pochino adesso ti sei chiarifi- chiar- chiarita, sì chiarificata, <ride> <ride> un pochino ti sei chiarita, però all'inizio mi ero un attimo persa perché grow up lo sapevo, penso anche molti ascoltatori perché te lo insegnano, yeah. grow anche, però eh, questa qui bring up, bring up, for no. example my parents brought me up to respect my teacher. Oh, um, that was very formal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah, miei yeah. genitori mi a rispettare i miei insegnanti. Perfetto. Yeah. No, è chiar- chiarissimo. Yeah, ok. So, questi sono, sì, alcuni phrasal verbs che creano un po' di confusione. Allora, per finire, stavamo parlando di phrasal verbs uh, in, in tutti i diversi campi, che non si può evitarli. Uh, poi, qualche consiglio... Uh, per studiare utilizzando phrasal verbs, write it down, write it down, scriverlo. Quando c'è un nuovo vocabolo, cioè quando c'è un nuovo phrasal verb, write it down, ma non soltanto nelle elenchi, not only in lists, perché è importante anche um, a fare le mappe di vocaboli perché si ricorda meglio. Certo. Uh, Prova di evitare anche fare traduzione sempre, così f- c'è un sforzo cognitivo per ricordarlo, dare un esempio, darlo, metterlo sempre in contesto. Uh, non soltanto il verbo nell'infinito senza niente, solo metti tutto un esempio, così lo sai come utilizzarlo. Ok. Ok. Uh, if you get behind, se sei indietro, you have to catch up. Catch up e recuperare. Sì. Um, don't stay up too late. Stay up late, che sarebbe um, andare a letto troppo tardi. Così ti rimani fresco. Don't stay up late. Go over your notes. Ripetere, um, ripassare. Go over your notes. Ok. Un altro phrasal verb. And last but not least, don't give up. Give up? Eh, sì, certo. Non arrendersi. Sì, sì, sì. sì. Don't give up because there's always hope. Perché comunque c'è sempre un po' di difficoltà. Ci sarà un, uh, we say, learning curve. Quando ci sono queste curve di apprendimento, allora forse lo trovi difficile. E poi che se resiste alla fine uh, abbatti tutto. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so have we got time to just quickly recap? Uh, quickly recap some of the phrasal verbs for today. Facciamo un piccolo riassunto. Re, qu- very quickly, quickly. Very just good. two minutes. Two minutes to do a, a, a quick summary of some of the most common phrasal verbs that we've spoken to today. Uh, when you're communicating, speak up. Uh, parli in alta voce. Listen up. Ascoltare. Shut up. Shut up. Shh. Be quiet. <laughs> zitto, zitto. Cheer up. Diriti su. Uh, telefono. Hold on. Aspettare. I'm putting you through, ti sto trasferendo la chiamata, ti, ti sto collegando. Hang up, quando agganci il telefono. 
che c'è pure la canzone di Madonna. That's right, I'm hung up on you. Yeah, che c'è anche l'altro significato. Yeah. Uh, also very useful when you're traveling. Se andate, volete andare a fare un viaggio, portate con voi un piccolo bagaglio pieno di phrasal verbs, perché yeah. ti, uh, ti aiuta quando fai viaggio, to get on the bus, get off the bus, salire e scendere, get in the taxi, entrare e salire sul taxi. Uh, speriamo the plane takes off, che l'aereo decola, e uh, atterri pure eh yeah. <laughs> uh, sì anche quello that land ma non abbiamo phrase per, per, per quello perché non c'è take off ma non c'è take on che vuol dire che è un brutto annuncio <laughs> cioè non utilizzate i phrase meno comune non lo so no 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 facciamo eh, le quel, corna le stai facendo right. tocca ferro tocca ferro touch wood touch wood noi tocchiamo legno c'è un po' di legno qui no help no help. è plastica where's the wood it's plastic oh my god oh my god so take off and uh, facciamo in modo formale land and atterrare ok yeah yeah we will land ok and then uh, ok when quando inizi un viaggio you set off partire sul viaggio quando quando si parte con i bagagli tutto quanto come siamo, uh, siamo messi one minute one minute left ok also if you're driving um, if you're taking a car if you're going to rent a car in England or another country watch out for speeding up Uh, occhio al limite di velocità so you need to slow down rallentare blow up the tire gonfiare le gomme fill up with petrol quando deve riempire con benzina uh, pull over quando deve accostare and speriamo non vogliamo essere pessimisti oggi ma c'è anche breakdown che è quando c'è guasto tanto questo è un termine che conoscono tutti breakdown eh certo perché c'è il film della Twilight Saga Ah, yes? Eh, breakdown, e quindi sicuramente tutti sanno il significato. Lo, io ci, me, ci scommetto, ci scommetto. Perché c'è anche breakdown per la macchina, anche nervous breakdown, esauramente nervoso, che siamo per fare con tutti questi phrasal verbs. <ride> sì, infatti, io credo che stanno sbattendo help, la testa help, contro help. il muro. <ride> credo che ho convinto tutti quanti che non vogliono più imparare questi no, phrasal verbs. No, no, sono importantissimi <ride> e poi sono so. utilissimi. Yeah, very, very useful. Ma Se volete sapere di più, venite a trovarmi alla scuola. So certo. Lì pieno di phrasal verbs, uh, <laughs> <sulla libreria. laughs> sì, tutti scritti. That's right. Okay, okay, so we're coming to the end now. Um, thank you for joining us. We've been listening to David Bowie, sì. um, the new songs from his new album, The Next Day, and we're going to finish off with another song by another track from that album, um, which is called You Feel So Lonely You Could Die. Che sarebbe ti senti così uh, solo che potresti morire. Ok. Mm. Not landing on a very happy note, but a beautiful song. Bella. S- Beh, comunque è bellissimo l'album quest'anno. Ok, Bella so vita. have a have a good day on this rainy Monday. That's goodbye for me, Sophie Bennett. And bye for Silvia. <laughs> Ciao. Bye.